God, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here today. And Lord, that you would open the floodgates of heaven because we're thirsty for you. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. It's wonderful to see you. My name is Pastor Kennan. It is my second Sunday here for those of you who are visiting or for the first time. And so I just want to welcome you to Blackwater United Methodist Church and explain to you that we are so glad that you're here. I'd like to also say hello to all of our friends out there on Facebook and on social media. We're glad that you've joined us as well. Um, there are some things that I absolutely love doing as a pastor, and uh, I get to do one of those uh, right now with somebody who I really love very much, and that is my wife, Rachel Pickett. Would you come forward this morning? So at the end of our services last week, uh, she decided that she wanted to join this Motley crew. <laughs> so, so we're uh, very excited uh, to uh, have you join us in membership this morning. And so I want to ask you this. Do you uh, claim Jesus Christ as your Savior? Hallelujah. All yes. right. <laughs> that was enthusiastic. I like the spirit. And do you... Uh, promise uh, to support this church and its ministries as an extension of Jesus Christ's own ministry and mission in the world for healing and reconciliation. Do you promise to do that with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Absolutely. I love this church. All right. You heard it right out of her own mouth. You can clap. Uh, one of the things that we do when new members join is that we have something that we want to say to you. Would you all mind putting that up on the screen? Let's say this together. We rejoice to recognize you as a member of Christ's Holy Church and bid you welcome to this congregation of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that surrounded by steadfast love, you may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Friends, your newest sister, Miss Rachel Pickett. Come here, you. I wouldn't normally give them a hug, but I'm going to hug you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, at this time, I'd like to invite you to stand as we sing our opening hymn, one of my favorites, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. That's page 400.
please stand if you are able as we say the Apostles Creed which should appear on our screen or you may want to take the hymnal out of the um, pew and it's on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ our Son, our Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing as we greet one another with a sign of peace as a way of welcoming everyone. may be seated. Now there are a few things that I want to uh, share with you about life in our community. One of them happens today, right after this service, and that's going to be a little welcome reception. Last week was a holiday weekend, so we thought we'd give people the opportunity to meet our family, and so that's going to take place outside, over at the fellowship hall. And so you'll get to meet my wife, Rachel, and those cute little acolytes that were uh, up here uh, this morning, Caleb and uh, Olivia. Um, very uh, uh, proud of you all uh, and, uh, and excited to introduce you to this congregation. And so we'll do that over there. Uh, also, if you're interested in meeting or greeting folks or doing anything in the life of our worship experiences, and we're going to have an impact team meeting next Sunday that's uh, going to take place. Look at your bulletin and get some more information about that. And then finally, I want you to save the date for July 31st. We're going to have a grand time uh, after the table service. We're going to be doing a potluck and open mic. That means you can sing, dance, you can do whatever you want to on that open mic. And I'm looking at Dwayne Denham going, oh God, what have we done? <laughs> so I've heard some of y'all sing, and I know you can sing. So you get find a sing or somebody who plays, and I want to hear uh, the best of Blackwater that day. So uh, we're going to do that, and I'm, I'm excited about that. At this time, I'd like to invite our acolytes uh, forward this morning. They're going to help us to uh, receive the offering. Would you all come forward? And uh, I'd like to also invite our ushers who are going to receive the offering uh, forward this morning as well. We give our prayers. We said it earlier in a new member joining. I want you to think of people that you need to intentionally pray for, the ones that God has laid upon your heart this morning, and offer your prayers during this time. You showed up today. You've already offered your presence. Your gifts are the ways that we continue ministry in this world, and we'll receive those by offering. You can do that a number of ways. There's a QR code on the insert uh, in the pew backs there. You can give that way. You can give online. There's a there's like five different ways that you can give. Your service. Just ask that you consider how might you help to grow the kingdom of God using your unique gifts. We talked about that last week. And your witness, your story. God is moving in each of your lives. Being willing to share that with someone this week as a witness to the goodness and presence of God. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for an opportunity to give you our offering. May it be pleasing to you, Lord. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Aren't we blessed to have Singh and her gifts here this morning? I would like at this time for us to enter into a time of prayer and meditation. As we are going to receive God's word this morning, as we are going to let it challenge us and let it search us. And in doing so, I'd ask that you would turn to page 357 as we sing our call to prayer this morning, just as I am. Good morning. I ask that you join me in this time of our corporate prayer. Good morning, Father God. We thank you for this wonderful day, a day in which we can lift you up with all the praises that our bodies can muster. We ask that you be with those who are in special need or want or have a heaviness on their hearts that either we know about or we're clueless. Give us the compassion that's needed. Give us the love that maybe we're holding back. Give us the courage to step forth so that we can be in the midst of a time, a big time, when God reigns, when God lifts, and when you, God, have all of your people in your hand serving with you. Bless all of us here so that we may go forth enriched, with this service, that as the music is lifted up and praises you, that we never forget that your love is everlasting. There's nothing we can do to deter it. May we enjoy that. May we reflect it. May we always reach out to those around us so that they too can learn to appreciate what you are to us, a really big time God. Now we ask that we all pray together the prayer that your son taught us to pray. And we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Dyer. That was beautiful. Really well done. Thank you. Good morning. I feel compelled to tell you all that you're beautiful. This church, the sanctuary, is really, really lovely. Last week when I got up here, I was wowed <laughs> looking out at, at all y'all and at this beautiful place. But not only is this building beautiful, y'all are truly beautiful. Thank you for the warm welcome that we have received here. I, we, our family, absolutely love being here. And we're thankful knowing that God has called us here. So I wanted to say that while I had the microphone. The scripture for today comes out of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. And he said, there was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that falls to me. And he divided his living between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took his journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in loose living. And when he had spent everything, a great famine arose in that country, and he began to be in want. So he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have fed on the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he gave, came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, but I perish here with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was yet at a distance, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and make merry. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to make merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what this meant. And he said to him, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Lo, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your living with harlots, you killed for him the fatted calf. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to make merry and be glad. For this, your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. This is the word of God for the people of God. Would you pray with me? God, we ask that we would be searched by your word this morning. May the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing to you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. So my family and I moved to Baton Rouge area about four years ago. And the first place that we landed here in Louisiana was in Prairieville. And our, and our um, kiddos went to the Dutchtown uh, schools. And we moved in a little subdivision over in Geismer. And right after we moved there, we had a community pool that opened, a shared pool, one that all of the homes in our subdivision could, uh, could partake in. And it was a very amazing pool. And I remember that event. In fact, I will never forget that event because I could have never imagined what would happen at that event. Our family had gone. There was about 100 or more people there. And uh, there was a big spread. It, I, I would have thought our subdivision was United Methodist that day because there was food everywhere. The kids were swimming. There were adults everywhere. I mean, it was just a great celebration. Everybody happy to beat the summer heat and get in the pool and swim. My daughter, Olivia, had decided that she wanted to get out and come eat because she was hungry. So she sat down with us. And at some point, she told me, Daddy, I'm going to go get some dessert. Awesome. Go get some, not too much. And so she did. And I was talking with my wife and some of our neighbors. And then I saw some commotion. Now, we were outside of the pool fence. I saw some commotion on the inside of the pool fence. People beginning to gather, and, and I could hear voices starting to be raised. And I looked over just in time to see a man come up out of the swimming pool in full clothes. And when he did in his arms, he had a child who was limp and blue and laid the child on the side of the pool. And I thought my eyes had deceived me, but it was Olivia. Fear and horror and the thing that any parent would fear the most in a situation like that was coming true right before my eyes. I just remember shooting up. I looked straight at my wife and I said, Rachel, my God, it's Olivia. She was looking over to process what was happening, and I stood up and I began to run around the fence so that I could get into that pool area. It was a trek. It was quite a ways to get around into the gate. But I was running, and the whole time I was screaming, no, 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 God, please, no. And I had begun to cry, and I got into that pool area. There was a woman giving her CPR when I arrived, and I reached down immediately and scooped her up in my arms. Her little blue lips, her pale skin, she was cold to the touch, and I grabbed her. And then I heard the most beautiful sound imaginable. I heard her cough up water all down my back. And then hot dog, I think. <laughs> but I didn't care because she was alive. That was a very personally scary thing for me. You see, I was born the baby in a family of five by far, like I was a baby by far. But I was born into divorcing parents, parents who were divorcing over the loss of a child. My brother died when he was seven of leukemia, and my parents just could not rebound from that. One found consolation in another person. The other found consolation in the bottle. I'll never forget when that happened. I'll never forget coming home from the hospital that night 
and just sitting down on my couch and breaking into one of those like ugly cries. I'll never forget it for as long as I live. But what I learned from these two experiences in my life, both the thing that happened at the pool and my birthplace and our family, is that generations are not automatic, nor are they guaranteed. You know, we sometimes in our lives take another day for granted, don't we? We really do. And then there's this discomfort when we realize that one defining moment, one thing can change it all. It really can. You know what I mean. For me, my outcome was good, but for many who have experienced something similar, the ending of their story is not good. You know what I mean. You've all experienced probably the death of a loved one or that time where you pick up the phone and it's your doctor's office and it's not the thing you want to hear. Or you stand before judge and jury and the gavel falls and there's judgment and sentencing or a letter arrives in the mail that's going to change your life. Or phone calls and texts go unanswered. Or someone sits and painfully recalls your actions from the night before in a drunken episode. We often live like everything's going to be the same tomorrow. But the truth is, life is far more fragile than that. What you have and who you know and how you experience your life can dramatically change from just one moment to the next. We can all recall moments when our lives have changed, right? For some, it may be when you graduated. I know my life changed when I graduated. It may be that first love that you ever felt for another person. It may be that time when you committed to someone and walked down the aisle and got married. Boy, that changed everything, didn't it? Maybe when you have your, your children, right, and you hold another human being and you realize you just woke up and now you're responsible for a, a whole person. <laughs> Jobs can change us. I'm experiencing change in my life right now. Two weeks ago, I was in a whole different place, and now I'm here with you. The point is, is that our lives can change. And so it is with Jesus Christ. When our lives cross and intersect Jesus Christ, the risen, resurrected Son of God, that's always life-changing. And so we come to this beautiful parable this morning that, that Rachel has read out of Luke. And parables, they're going to play a very important part in Jesus's ministry because what happens is parables expose these fault lines, right, that underlie some of our thinking, some of our shallow thinking, some of our ill-conceived and incomplete ways of thinking. And what parables do is they expose these deeper truths, but they also expose a deeper reconciliation and healing that it's available to us as Jesus followers. You see, it's funny because we always like to seek justice for everybody else, like that older brother, right? I want justice for him. But we always want mercy for ourselves, right? We want mercy, justice for you, but mercy for me. So what happens when Jesus tells a parable that says, I know that that's what your flesh wants. But the extraordinary reconciliation and healing given by the God of the rock of ages is more than anyone deserves. <laughs> what happens 
when Jesus says, I'm talking about full healing, full restoration, a complete healing. What happens when Jesus tells a parable that says, you know what? God is going to offer mercy to both sons. Both sons. The one who squandered and was entitled, but also the one who was resentful and entitled. What if the triune God, the God of ages, offers mercy to both? Not either or, but both and. Now remember, Jesus is saying all of this to these very judgy Pharisees and scribes who were gossiping about the company that Jesus was keeping lately, having dinner parties with tax collectors and other unsavory characters. So what happens when Jesus says that reconciliation and healing is eating at the table together with them all and with God in an ongoing open invitation to come home and celebrate. You see, church, what we learn here is the importance of us passing on our faith, our truth, and our traditions from generation to generation. Ultimately, if we don't, you see what happens is the world loses this resurrection power and this tradition of celebrating it as the family of God. We lose it. Without us being committed to passing on the knowledge of God and the promises of God and the salvation offered by God through Jesus Christ, you see, our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, well, they won't know that God is making a way for them even in the dead places. We don't win our generations for Jesus Christ. No one will know the death-defying love of God, the life-giving power of the Spirit of God, or the extravagant, salvific love of the Son of God. I cannot bear to think of life that's that hopeless. I do not wish to live in perpetual, unmerciful places, and nor do I wish it on others. You see, we simply must win our generations. And we, friends, were put together at this time, in this place, for just a time as this, so that one day every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus' disciples, they learned to understand Jesus' messages and then pass them on. They didn't just hold them. Friends, we're here to build a generation grounded in the rock of ages, to pass on truth and traditions throughout time. The passing on of our spiritual heritage and the teaching of the generations behind us to do the same, that, friends, is mission critical. That has to be a centerpiece for us. The result of that is a spirit-led, a spirit-led transformation in the world right here and right now, thy kingdom come, that we just prayed, right? But it's also this. The big times. And I'm not just talking generation to generation. I'm talking about God-sized multiplication. The big times that increases the citizenship of the kingdom of God. Big times is what happens when we, when we win our generations for God, fueled by the urgency of understanding how precious the lost are to God. Do you remember the story I told you of Olivia? Laid on the side of the pool with her blue lips and lifeless one minute and then coughing up water and hot dog and gasping for, gasping for breath in the arms of her father? 
That's what resurrection of the dead is. Of course, we're going to throw a party, said the father to the older brother. Because your brother was once dead, but now he is alive. What we do, friends, has implications. Not only for the church triumphant, but the church right now, today, and certainly for the churches of the future. Generations aren't automatic or guaranteed unless with resurrection power, we win ours for Jesus Christ. Friends, together, we're looking for the big times the multiplication of the kingdom of God. Now, you may or may not know, I like to sing and I like music. And the Lord laid a song on my heart this morning that I thought really would help bring this message home for us. So I'd like to sing it for you now. It's called, Bowed on My Knees and Cried Holy.
on these old rugged knees. And I cried holy. Help us to be a church. A church who is dedicated to winning generations for Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. this last song a song that just says God your grace is amazing <laughs> I'd like to invite anyone else who would like to come and join this motley crew <laughs> to work together to win generations for Jesus Christ so during this song if you would like to come forward and you feel like you want to join this church or if you just need prayer or you want to rededicate yourself to the mission of reaching the world for Jesus, I would just ask that you come forward and let me pray with you. And so with that, I'd invite you to turn to page 378 to the beautiful song, Amazing Grace.
And now, people of God, receive this benediction. You all want to come and blow those candles out for me? Receive this benediction. Go with the peace of God, and may the peace of God go in you. And may we together reach our generations for Jesus Christ so that the truth and our traditions may be passed on and that we may multiply the kingdom of God. Amen.